Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim Henderson. Well, I had some good time in prayer and praise this morning and dreams, dreams last night. Nothing that is significant to what I've shared before. I want to bring you some news updates, and I'm going to call these end time news updates because as we are watching we're we're one day away from Purim and I've shared I I have a Sunday evening teaching on that I've shared the significance of Purim and and the foreshadowing of tribulation period I'm not saying that the rapture will happen on this Purim, but the rapture could happen at any time. And we are in a significant season. Many people are reporting dreams and visions and hearing shofar sounding. And I'll tell you what, when I sh I'm going to get to the news. As I share this news, wow. Things are just aligning. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. I know what the word says. And then when we overlay what's going on in the geopolitical, in the world news, over the prophecies of the word of God, wow. So let's get to it. Right now, in the UK, there is the biggest multinational military exercises in the world's history. There are 13 nations and roughly 10,000 troops. It also includes B-52 bombers from the U.S. Meanwhile, Russia has moved another 14,000 troops to Crimea. North Korea has told the U.S. that they are no longer going to negotiate with the U.S. and have now commenced the manufacture of ICBMs and ballistic and nuclear materials. On the African front, things have seemed quiet for now. Mossad says, is reporting, that they, they are getting over 100 cyber attacks every day. Remember, for a couple months, I've been saying the U.S. and the U.K. are prime targets for imminent cyber attacks. Could include an EMP. We just don't know. But I believe attack is imminent. Um... I also believe the rapture is imminent. Don't know the day nor hour, but I'll tell you what, I am really excited about my glorified body. Iran has started using missile factories in Syria, and they have intel that suggests Iran, Syria, Hamas, and Hezbollah are planning a joint strike on Israel they just don't give the timing. Now, that's really not a surprise because we know the hatred for Israel and Jerusalem, as the Bible says, the cup of reeling. Brothers and sisters, we are living in the most exciting times in church history. The rapture of the bride of Christ is so soon, so soon. We see all these things aligning we see the natural disasters, the devastation, the chaos. We can't make this stuff up. This is incredible, the season that we're living in. Purim, as I have reported, is tomorrow. It's the 20th and 21st. What's going to happen? I don't know. Is it significant and are signs significant? You bet. We have the spring equinox. We have the super moon. You have rabbis declaring that they're going to introduce their Messiah. They're not talking about Jesus. Meanwhile, you have this Israeli scholar who has come out pointing to the whole story of Purim with Esther Mordecai, King Ahasuerus, or Xerxes, he's known as, and the evil Haman, and says the real villain of Purim is Jesus Christ, the true Messiah. He, he points to it in his article. It's not only just a wholesale rejection of him, it's an indictment of Messiah. Meanwhile, a crown has been fashioned and they're ready to receive their Messiah. Will this happen? I don't know. I don't know. I can only tell you what the Word of God says and then point to what's going on in the news that is really significant when you add it all up. And then you've got these Russian scientists. Whether it's true or not, whether it happens or not, 
They're saying there's going to be a major earthquake that impacts Central America, Mexico, the West Coast, and the West Coast of the United States, California. Could that happen? Of course it could. All of these things point to something is about to happen. What that something is. Do I believe that it could be the rapture of the church? You bet I do. Am I going to say that that's that the Lord told me that? No way. Am I going to say that's the day nor hour? No way. What am I going to do in any event? I'm going to I'm going to occupy and redeem the time. I'm going to make sure I'm in the word. I, I have my praise on, and I'm going to tell as many people about Jesus as I can. I shared yesterday a testimony at the gas station of a man who came to faith in Jesus Christ. Well, my beautiful bride was with me all day, and we had appointments, and we ended up... I also had a personal appointment with a doctor, and we ended up... Um, at a, a wonderful family's home where we had food and fellowship. It was later than than we would have liked, um, but but it was. We got there and we just had a great time. And after I had to stop somewhere and I ran in and my wife was watching me, and I came out and she said, "You were witnessing, weren't you?" Because she was ready to go home. She had our little grandson Mikey um, in the car with her, and. And he is quite the Zadie's boy as well. So when I got out of the car, he started crying. Although he loves his Mimi also. And she said, I knew it. I knew you were witnessing. I could see you talking to those people. The amazing thing is, and I'm telling you, I'm experiencing this. People are either, nope, don't want to hear about it. And then, you know, I'm not going to force that. Or they're responding. They're responding. And a young man came to faith. In Yeshua HaMashiach, in Jesus Messiah. It, it, brothers and sisters, be bold. Be bold. There is, as much as there is a rejection, like I've just talked about in Israel. And by the way, we support a ministry in Israel, uh, that a messianic ministry that is reaching many Israelis who are coming to faith in Jesus and Yeshua, praise God. And there's many Muslims that are reporting in. Some of our family members on here on this channel have made comments and shared how they have come to faith in Jesus. Praise God, praise God. We want to, and what if, what if, I, I know so many of you are so eager for the, the harpazo, the catching away, as am I. What if it doesn't happen on this poem? What if were we still occupy for longer than than we have had hope we keep we keep looking up and watching and we occupy and redeem the time it won't be long in the meantime we get to share the gospel of grace you know we are saved Ephesians 2 8 and 9 we are saved for we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves not by works lest anyone should boast. It goes on to talk about works. Works will flow from our life. You, When you come to faith in Jesus, when you believe on his atoning work on the cross, that he paid the debt for your sins, always was God, laid down his glory, wrapped in flesh, born of a virgin, lived a perfect life. He never sinned. Thank, thank you, Jesus. When you think about the fact that he was tempted and lived, and no, he knows what it is, to live like we do, and he never sinned. And he shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary to pay the debt completely whole, perfect for us, once and for all. Praise God, once and for all, all my sins. That's why we call it the free gift of salvation. He did what we couldn't do for ourselves. And he died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. Romans 10, 9 and 10, look it up. I share it all the time. You believe, then you are saved. Hallelujah. And, and now we get to share that message. Praise God. Because you believe, right? And believing, there, there's a change of mind. Repentance is a change of mind. And then what comes from your life, you begin to grow in Christ-like character. And you want to you want to walk in obedience to God's word. You want to please him, not because you have to to stay saved, because we don't go in and out of our salvation that way. And I'm not talking about the great apostasy the Bible's talking about. I'm going to be doing a teaching on that because so many are confused about that. But I'm talking about the fact that what I couldn't do for myself, Jesus did for me. And I praise him for it. And you still have, you still have a carnal nature. 
but your spirit, man, is alive in Christ. And you are in perfect position to a holy God because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. You're not going to be perfect in performance. I'm not perfect in performance. But we want to honor God. And sanctification, while complete, is also progressive. Our justification is sure. And now what's coming in short order is our glorification. Do you realize the Lord himself, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 18, shall descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. There are, the dead in Christ are already in his presence. Their bodies are going are gonna to meet up with them, glorified, transformed, and and then those of us who are alive are going to be caught up together with them in the air with the Lord and we'll be together with him forever. And there's so much more. But oh, it's glorious. We're going to get glorified bodies. We're not going to deal with this carnal nature anymore. Praise God. In the meantime, we, we stay in his word. We learn and grow in his word. We love him. He's given us his word. Hebrews 4.12 tells us it's alive and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. It pierces between bone and marrow, soul and spirit, and is a discerner and judge of the motives and intentions of the heart. And Oh, praise God for his word, for his word. Psalm 119, we let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. Right? We want to hide his words in our heart that we sin not against God because we love him and we want to honor him. And in this season, I'll tell you what, Matthew 28, 19, and 20, you look it up, the Great Commission, we want to share the gospel and be missional. So the body of Christ right now, let's, as the Bible teaches, let's worship him in spirit and in truth. Build one another up in the faith. Don't eat. The body of Christ needs to stop bashing and 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 eating each other alive. Don't reach, even if your brother or sister is in error or wrong, love them, share the truth with them. Do it in love. Don't, this the vitriol, the hatred. You know, the Bible says, they, the world, will know us by our love. 1 John 4, 7 and 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So we are in a season, let's love one another, build one another up, and love the lost, and take every opportunity. I don't care where you are. You may be delayed a little bit. I've told my family and my church family, listen, if I'm late, if I'm running late, I'll text them. If I'm sharing the gospel of grace with someone, and I see they are responding, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving, because I'm going to rejoice with the angels as a new name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yesterday alone, just in where I was, I consider those ordained appointments, but I didn't plan those. Take those opportunities, seize those moments, and may the joy of the Lord be your strength. We have much to rejoice over. No matter what we're going through, let's get your praise on. Praise often leads way to victory. He is coming very, very, very soon. Well, I'm going to leave you with this. Before the ironic blessing, the Lord loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his countenance be lifted on you. And his shalom, his peace, which passes all understanding, perfect, whole, complete, nothing lacking, nothing missing, be yours. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus Messiah, I pray and I bless you. Brothers and sisters, if you find this update valuable, like it, share it, tell others about it. Praise God. We want to get the word out there. Love you. Have an awesome rest of your day.